Just remember, FPL is tough, but you are tougher. Hi guys, I'm FPL and Freya and welcome back to the home of FPL videos. In a week of injury and rotation, I was hit hard by my decisions. Let's take a look at how I got on in game week 21. Martinez made it up to me this week. Now, okay, I get VAR meant he kept his clean sheet by the slimmest of margins. But that aside, he was an absolute legend in that match, making four saves and nabbing all three bonus points for 10 points towards my team total. In defence, I've had an absolute horror show, thanks to Pep Roulette and my own undoing. From the sublime saving my season city highs to the ridiculous killing my season city lows, neither of the city boys played. This was a shock to the system and extremely unexpected. Hopefully it means that Pep rates them highly and they'll be back next week, but I guess we'll have to wait and see given their stand-ins did an excellent job while they weren't there. Not good and absolutely heartbreaking. Talking of heartbreaking, you'll notice Dina is in my team. I've had an absolute clangor here. In my last video, I was all about sorting my forward line out and that was my mission last week. Unfortunately, I got swayed from that with the Everton fixture and on discussing my moves on social media, Dina was suggested to me. I hadn't even considered him not even considered him once until Friday night. The more he was mentioned, the more I got swayed and sucked into the idea. So I took a hit and got him in for Dallas. Ouch, a 10 point swing there. And up there with one of my worst decisions of the season so far, along with selling Sonny for both of his hordes. Now, I'm not saying these suggestions are bad necessarily. I've had many, many a positive outcomes from suggestions on social media. I just think it's knowing when something fits in with your plan or not. And in this case, as you guys know, it wasn't my plan this week. And I should have left in yet another week once my plan was complete and I had more information on him and felt more comfortable with that transfer. In midfield, it's mostly been a letdown again. Bruno now just has one assist in five game weeks, not great for his price. Sushek doing Sushek things, one week he hauls, another he blanks, I mean we're kind of getting used to that. Sun was unfortunately how we all expected he might be without Kane. Ugh, that, that's tough that one and could only manage two points towards my team total. Salah was the shining light in my team and the only one of a few players who did anything for me. I almost captained him. Oh, the pain. I said last week it wasn't his fault he didn't get that goal. I woke up Saturday morning with the feeling to put the armband on him. I struggled with it all the way up until the last minute and I just kind of thought, you know what? 10 minutes before the deadline, I won't go switching it now because if I switch and it goes wrong, I will regret it because it's so close to the deadline. But I just wish I was brave enough to follow my gut there because if I'd gone with it, Obviously, I'd be a lot better off now. A brace from him, and you know what? All points towards my team total is a good thing. But I can't help be like what might have been if I'd gone with the captaincy there. With no Harry Kane to move to and to captain, you know what? I was so sure that was going to be my move this week. I just got lost and I didn't follow my gut, so I settled on Gundogan as captain because it felt like the safe option because a lot of people were doing it this week. You know, it didn't feel right because as I said last week, I wasn't sure he'd be able to sustain his performance from the week before. Unfortunately, my fears were realised and I got just three points from him, double to six. Grealish continues to look good. I'd like him or one of the Leicester lads in Madison or Barnes going forward, but whom do I sell in midfield to accommodate it is my dilemma. Moving to my forwards, and this has its good and its bad. I was so set on buying Harry and Captain in him, as I said, that when he got injured, I was left with Antonio, Calvert-Lewin or Watkins as options. Given Antonio's fixture against Liverpool, I decided to plump for Calvert-Lewin. Unfortunately, Everton were bad all round and DCL could only manage two points. However, the one saving grace was that I wasn't sure who to sell of Adams and Bamford, as you'll know from my last video, and holding them another week for another look at least worked out in my favour this time. As Bamford didn't feel right to sell, as I said, 
and thankfully holding him was rewarded with a goal and two assists for 12 points towards my team total. That means these were my three top scorers for game week 21, Emmy the legend Martinez, the Egyptian king Salah and Bam Bam Bamford. With all of that I got 58 points this game week, not bad given the average was just 20 points. I did take a minus 4 so that's a net of 54 points. It was a red arrow, I was due one after 8 green arrows in a row so I can't really complain. It could have been a lot worse, the drop thankfully was just 12,000 places and for the moment I am still in the top 1 million club around 810,000. They haven't spotted me to chuck me out yet, so let's hope they don't find me. Of course, I'd have been much better off if I didn't make that Dinia move and if I'd gone with my gut and Captain Salah, but hindsight is, of course, a wonderful thing. A little shout out to Sanchez on my bench, who's been quietly chugging away with clean sheets for three weeks in a row now. A 4.5, that's not too bad for a second goalkeeper. Not that I've ever considered playing him once. Hmm. Looking ahead to game week 22 and this is how I'm currently lined up. This isn't a bad lineup and there's an argument to roll a transfer here. I have to give the Everton lads leads. Much to my disdain and I need to know about their doubles before booting them straight back out of my team. But I will not suffer fools gladly if they don't impress midweek. So they have midweek to impress me and that is it. Can't help feel like I should get Antonio now for Adams. I know he didn't score against Liverpool, but he still looks really good. He's passed the eye test for me. And to be honest, this will likely be my move, if any, this week. But it does leave me with a benching headache. Do I drop Sushek to the bench now? We all know that's a risk. Or maybe Sun, given the Kane injury and Chelsea's two clean sheets on the bounce? Hmm. Or will Gundog maybe get rotated given Pep seems to be pretty keen on that at the moment? This is a tough one. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I would like one of Grealish, Madsen or Barnes soon. Midweek will give me another look on which one of those to plump for and hopefully who to drop in midfield to accommodate one of them because at the moment that's a really tough choice. My Game Week 22 captain is between Salah and Bruno. Southampton haven't kept a clean sheet in three matches but Bruno has been poor of late. Oh, this is a tough one. It's on Mo for now, based on form. I need to go with my gut on this one because I didn't do it last week and it really hurt. When you don't go with your gut, it really, really sucks, to be honest, if it goes wrong. So you're better off going with your gut because then either way you can always say you went with your gut. So I need a bit more time to think on this one. Hopefully it'll be a bit like Saturday. I'll sleep on it tonight and hopefully I'll wake up tomorrow morning knowing where to put the armband. And lastly, moving on to the trending chances this week, let's take a look at the players in and out ahead of game week 22. Of the goalkeepers, Martinez is still the trendiest goalkeeper in with 39 plus thousand purchases at the time of recording. Edison is still the next highest in with over 20,000 buys. McCarthy is the most transferred out goalkeeper ahead of game week 22 with 17 plus thousand saves. The next highest out is Mendy with 12 plus thousand managers getting rid of the Chelsea goalkeeper. Of the defenders, the drop Chilwell is leading the way out with 82 plus thousand sales. The second most transferred out is the injured Walker Peters with over 76,000 managers selling on the Southampton man. Diaz is the trendiest defender in after his safety start in game week 21 with 124,000 plus purchases. Creswell is the second most transferred in defender with 78,000 buys. In midfield, Salah is the trendiest midfielder in this week after his brace in game week 21, resulting in 247 plus thousand buys. Grealish is the second most transferred in with over 91,000 buys. Sun is the most switched out midfielder this week with 96 plus thousand sales. And Saka is the next highest midfielder sold this week owing to injury with over 77,000 sales. Up front, Kane is the trendiest forward out this week due to injury with 400 
151 plus 1000 managers moving on the top forward in the game. Calvert Lewin is the second most sold forward this week with over 62,000 sales. Wilson is the front runner in the forwards category this week with over 252,000 purchases. Antonio is the second most bought forward ahead of game week 22 with 115 plus 1000 buys. That's it you guys, thanks for watching, lots of luck for game week 22. Please don't forget to check out my sponsors of this video, fantasyfootballfix.com and before you go, please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Until next time, Nymphria out.